February 12, 2017, the largest dam in the United States is on the verge of collapse. An emergency order is given, evacuate the cities below. People pile into cars, desperate to make it to higher ground, before a wall of water roars through the valley, destroying all in its path. For many of them, this is the most terrifying moment of their lives. But this story begins 60 years earlier. Throughout the 1950s, America had suffered a series of floods. The Great Flood of 51 killed 17 people in Kansas and Missouri and caused a billion dollars of damage, more than 10 billion in today's money. A year later, Missouri flooded again, and there were similar problems in North Dakota. In 1955, another flood killed 87 people in Connecticut, and in 1956, 64 people were killed by a flood in California. The government decided enough was enough and passed the River and Harbor Flood Control Act of 1957. This act authorized massive projects all around the country in the hope of getting lakes and rivers properly under control. One of these projects was the Oroville Dam in California's Central Valley. Construction started right away, but it wasn't an easy ride. Seven years later, in December 1964, the Oroville Dam was halfway finished, and construction workers were looking forward to a well-deserved Christmas break. But before they had a chance to pack up their tools, it started to rain. Not just a drizzle, but a violent deluge pouring in sheets from the sky. In some parts of California, more than a year's worth of rain came down in a couple of days. Mudslides rolled down the mountains, rivers burst their banks, people called it the Thousand Year Flood because they didn't think such heavy rain would be seen for another millennium. Behind the half-completed Oroville Dam, the reservoir started to rise. It looked like the water would reach the top, flow over the edge, rush through the construction site, and down into the Central Valley. The construction workers could do nothing to stop it. But luckily, the rain stopped just in time, and a major disaster was averted. Ten months later, in October 1965, the workers weren't quite so lucky. For the last few years, work trains had been carrying materials to the site, and in 1966, two of them collided in a tunnel. Four people died, and the crash ignited thousands of liters of diesel, which exploded from the tunnel in a billow of flame. This wasn't the only fatal accident that took place during the dam's construction. Over the course of a decade, more than 30 workers died on site. When the project was finally completed in May 1967, the construction workers were relieved. As for the people in the Central Valley, it was cause for celebration. To mark the occasion, there was a week of festivities, with some major names like future President Ronald Reagan arriving to give speeches. At 235 meters, the Oroville became the tallest dam in all of America, taller even than the famous Hoover Dam. At the time of construction, it was the tallest building in California. The giant dam could hold a massive quantity of water, hundreds of millions of cubic meters. In the winter, it would help with flooding. In the summer, it would help with droughts. It even had a row of generator turbines to provide hydroelectric power. But there was an important question that needed to be answered. Was the Oroville Dam safe? Without a proper set of safety measures, a dam can be a dangerous structure. If the level of the reservoir rises too high and flows over the top, a wall of water can rush down into the valley, destroying towns and cities along the way. The dam might even collapse under the pressure, releasing a tsunami-like body of water. That's what happened in Jumadian, China, just a decade after the Oroville Dam was finished. Two dams collapsed after extreme rainfall, and the wall of water claimed more than 100,000 lives. In terms of dam disasters, it's the worst on record, but it isn't the only example. Hundreds of dams have collapsed or overtopped in places around the world. To reduce the chances of this happening, these structures are usually built with spillways, and the Oroville was no exception. These are special channels with gates at the top that can be opened up when the reservoir gets too high. It's like an overflow hole in a bathtub or sink. If the water ever reaches that level, it pours down the hole instead of overflowing the sides. The Oroville Dam had two spillways. The main one was a concrete channel, almost a kilometer long, with eight floodgates at the top. When those floodgates opened, water flowed out at a discharge rate of 8,000 cubic meters per second. That's enough water to fill more than 150 Olympic swimming pools every single minute. 
If that wasn't enough, an emergency spillway would come into play. Instead of a concrete channel, this emergency spillway was a small weir about six meters shorter than the wall of the dam. If the reservoir ever got that high, it would gush over the edge of this small weir before reaching the top of the dam. Any water flowing through the emergency spillway would waterfall straight down the side of the hill down into the river below. It would be a wild, uncontrolled stream, but it would quickly reduce the level of the reservoir and keep the dam safe from collapse. At least, that was the plan. But in the first few decades of the dam's existence, the emergency spillway was never put to the test. Year after year, rainfall was low enough for the main spillway to deal with. But everything changed in 2017, when California endured its wettest winter in a hundred years. For the first time in history, the Oroville Dam's emergency spillway was called into action, and things quickly started to go wrong. February 7th, five days before the evacuation. The crisis started on a Tuesday morning. For the past month or so, the main spillway had been used to keep the reservoir at a manageable level, just as it had done so many times before. The region's rainfall was historically high, but the main spillway was keeping up. Then the workers at the dam noticed something. There was an odd disturbance in the water flowing down the main spillway, as though the currents were getting caught on something hidden below the surface. They closed the floodgates to see what was going on. When the water drained away, the workers were in for a shock. About halfway down the main spillway, part of the channel had collapsed. There was an ugly gaping crater in the concrete, and the workers knew if they let the water flow down again, the damage would only get worse. Three days before the evacuation, with the main spillway shut off, the level of the reservoir was rising again and getting dangerously close to the top of the dam. It left the workers with a difficult decision. They could reopen the main spillway and make the crater worse, or they could wait for the water to reach the emergency spillway and let it flow down the hill instead. If possible, they didn't want to use the emergency spillway. It had never been called into action before, and in the last few decades, the hillside where the water was meant to flow down had become overgrown with trees. There there were power lines there too, which would be washed away. The decision was made to reopen the main spillway, but only at a limited rate. The workers hoped that the reduced stream would be enough to control the level of the reservoir without putting too much strain on the crater. A spokesperson said, we do not anticipate any water going over the emergency spillway, but he couldn't have been more wrong. One day before the evacuation. The reduced stream wasn't getting rid of water fast enough. The level of the reservoir was still rising, and in a matter of hours, it would hit the level of the emergency spillway for the first time in history. In a sudden panic, workers began to clear the hillside. They cut down trees and cleared the power lines, getting everything done with moments to spare. For the first time ever, the reservoir reached the top of the spillway and started to flow over the edge. Within seconds, a ragged torrent of water was surging downhill and it didn't take long for the workers to notice that something was terribly wrong. When the emergency spillway was originally designed, a geology report had taken a look at the hillside. The report concluded that the hill was made of hard, durable bedrock. When water from the spillway flowed across it, the hill was supposed to stand firm, but the geology report was mistaken. When water coursed down the raw hillside, the fierce currents tore at the mud and rocks. The entire hillside was disintegrating, and suddenly, out of nowhere, the emergency spillway was at risk of a terrible collapse. The Day of the Evacuation If the disintegrating hill brought down the dam, billions of liters of reservoir water would surge through the valley in a violent, unstoppable wave. The state ordered an evacuation of the Central Valley, more than 100,000 people. We had to make a very, very critical, difficult decision to initiate the evacuation. I couldn't risk the lives of thousands of people. The California Department of Water Resources said the dam was predicted to fail within the next hour. Terrified citizens tried to escape. There was gridlock on the roads, and gas stations were drained of fuel. At any second, people expected to hear a thunderous roar and see a tsunami rushing down the valley towards them. It's that emergency spillway that is in jeopardy, and if it fails, communities downstream would be in serious trouble. Back at the dam, water was still rushing over the edge of the emergency spillway, eating away at the hill. 
workers threw open the main spillway, no longer caring about the damage they caused to the concrete channel. All that mattered was lowering the reservoir past the level of the emergency spillway. It was a race against time. Would the water stop flowing down the emergency spillway before the entire hill collapsed? And then, suddenly, at 9 p.m., the water stopped. It's easy to imagine what those workers felt. One way or another, the Oroville spillways had done their job, discharging a massive amount of water and getting the reservoir back to a manageable level. February 13th, the aftermath. When the hillside dried up, a fleet of helicopters was called into action, dropping sandbags and boulders onto the scarred terrain. The repairs worked, and on the following day, the dam was declared safe again. The level of the reservoir was under control, and people were invited to return to their homes. The event still caused some damage in the Central Valley. When the hillside broke down, the mud and rocks were dragged downriver and damaged a major fishery. About 9 million fish had to be evacuated to another fishery downstream, but all things considered, the damage could have been much worse. Then, a scandal hit the news. A decade earlier, three environmental groups, the Friends of the River, the Sierra Club, and the South Yuba Citizens League, had reached out to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. These groups were worried about the Oroville Dam's emergency spillway and thought the flow of water down the raw hillside could erode the rocks and destabilize the main dam. These groups had asked the Federal Commission to cover that part of the hill with concrete so the hillside wouldn't erode. But this upgrade would have cost more than $100 million, so the Federal Commission ignored the groups and left the dam as it was. On another occasion in 2013, workers at the dam had noticed a crack in the main spillway, in the exact same spot that the crater would form during the disaster of 2017. A team of engineers repaired the crack, but these repairs weren't closely monitored. During a safety check two years later, the inspectors didn't bother to examine that part of the spillway up close. According to a report, they examined the concrete from some distance and may have missed a sign that would have averted the entire crisis. By ignoring a series of warning signs, they had put the lives of thousands of people at risk. One assemblyman called it terrifying. He said, it's a mess that has to be fixed. The Oroville Dam wasn't the only dam where warning signs had been ignored. Officially speaking, if a dam was more than 50 years old, it was past its designated lifespan. A survey carried out in 2016, a few months before the Oroville crisis, found that the vast majority of dams in America were already past that cutoff. To avoid another crisis in the future, they needed to be modernized and improved. That's what happened at the Oroville Dam in the years following the disaster. By 2018, more than a billion dollars had been spent on repairs and improvements. This included a complete rebuilding of the main spillway, complete with modern instruments to measure any dangerous buildup of pressure. Construction workers also installed stronger foundations in the rock beneath the emergency spillway. A safety report in 2020 said that the dam was officially safe and reliable. The emergency spillway hasn't been called into action since 2017, but if it's ever used again, the hillside shouldn't erode. As for the new and improved main spillway, it has been used on a couple of occasions. Most recently, it was opened in March 2023 to discharge a small stream of water. In the end, no one was killed by the Oroville Dam disaster, but on another day, the event could have been a lot worse. The entire crisis was an important lesson. Dams are powerful, dangerous structures, and when it comes to safety, we should never ignore the warning signs. What do you think of this disaster that was just barely averted at the last moment? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to hear about some other structures that also went wrong, you should watch our video about them. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.